Hey everybody, I am so excited for today's video because we are gonna be discussing what I personally think are the top essentials for preschoolers and kindergartners. All right, let's get started. Hi, my name is Emily and welcome back to my channel, Loving My Littles. If you're new here, I'm a homeschooling mama who taught at a private school for five years, and now I'm at home teaching my own three kiddos. You know, between those years of teaching at the school and the years of teaching my kiddos, I've seen things that really do work, especially for the preschool and kindergarten age. So I wanted to give you some ideas that you can use for your own kiddos to really help them thrive and learn. So this is my list of my top essentials for preschool and kindergarten. And I say essentials, but you don't have to use these to homeschool. These are just things that I've noticed are great tools that you can use to teach your kiddos. And so I would really encourage you to look into them. And this is actually video one of a two video series because when I started thinking of everything, it was a long list. So I made it into two separate videos for this week and next week. And I hope you'll watch both of them and maybe you can get some great ideas for your kids. All right, let's get started. So one of my essentials that I think is important to use for the younger students is a My First Pencil. Now this is from Ticonderoga. They are my favorite brand of pencils, but this pencil is thicker. And that's because when kids have smaller hands, it's easier for them to grasp thicker objects than thinner ones. And this is better for their where they're at in their muscle development because their hands tend to get tired when they're using these little thin pencils. And so they're able to hold onto these better. Usually their hands don't get as tired and it really helps with their penmanship as they're learning to make their letters. So for my preschooler and kindergartner this past year, we use these all year and um, it definitely is easier for them to use. So I would look into getting a My First Pencil for your younger kids. All right, another essential I believe is pencil grips. Now, I don't have mine right here at the table, but I will show you a picture of it. Um, these are ours that we use. And so these are for the littler pencils. Now, we unfortunately have not found any for the larger My First pencil. So if you know of a pencil grip that is great for a larger pencil, please uh, let me know about it. Put it in the comments because I would like to find one. But we use these for our smaller pencils. There's a place where you can put your fingers in. Um, it shows exactly how to hold it and they just put their fingers in the holes um, there and it helps them know exactly how to hold their pencil. And so it trains the brain and their hand so that way they already have that habit because some kids have trouble with learning how to hold their pencil. And so when they're first learning or if they struggle with it, pencil grips are a great way. So I would encourage you to look into pencil grips and find out which one will be the best fit for your child because knowing how to hold a pencil is a skill that they're gonna use the rest of their life. All right, next essential is that I would say use lined paper when your kiddos are young because it really does help. It helps them with knowing and being able to see their penmanship better, um, knowing how to form their letters because they're spread out more. This is um, some of the tablets that it says it's for pre-K to first. And so we used a lot of this um, where they can again, visualize their penmanship, know where to start and stop, and they have a larger area to write their letters because when they're first starting, they need to be able to see that um, shown to them. And so our curriculum definitely tells where to start and stop and where to break off for your different parts of the letter. So lined paper, this is pretty much the same thing, only it's in this format. And it says K through second because it's a little bit smaller, but we like to use these lined papers um, for our younger kids. And it definitely helps as they're learning to write their letters. I'm actually a little picky when it comes to penmanship for my kindergartner, not too much to where I make him redo everything or, you know, tears, but I want him to do his best. So as long as I can tell he's doing his best and it's not just slopped down, I, that's what I require. And so this really helps them to be able to visualize that because you know, once they start that habit, I want a habit of good penmanship to follow him through his life. So these uh, lined writing tablets are an essential to us. 
All right, next we have dry erase pockets or dry erase covers. I'm not sure how, what you call them, but we have one for each one of our kiddos. We have a box where we keep their curriculum. Um, each one has a separate box with their curriculum. They're my first pencil, um, pencil grips, things like that. And so they each had one of these. This is just what we used last in them. Uh, my son was playing a game, my bug jar. Um, it's a file folder game where you put bugs, you know, you just grab a handful of these pictures of bugs. They sort them out, find out how many ants there were, how many ladybugs, how many flies. They add them all together. And so it works on sorting and graphing and addition. And so um, it's great for them. So this is something they can do over and over and over again and erase with a dry erase marker. And we use these a lot for that type of thing. Then this, we just talked about lined paper. This is a huge lined area. So for my preschooler, as she's learning to write the letter A, this is something that she definitely likes to use because she can make it really big and just see the shape of it firsthand. And so we can erase it and do it over and over again. And so this is one that we use a lot for her. And just these covers, you can get them at Amazon, um, Target Dollar Spot, they're not very expensive. and. They save you so much um, in paper and ink because you're not making so many copies, you can use it over and over again. I would totally recommend these. All right, when your child's learning to read, an essential that I think is the guided reading strips. And so these are just um, strips that you put over the words and in the middle is transparent. There's a color, but you can see through it. And so it um, lets them focus just on that one highlighted section, that one, whether it's, um, you know, you can get bigger ones where there's more shown or just one line, or they even have these that you put on your finger and you just do a few words at a time. And so it definitely helps your child focus on what they're reading. If they're the type of kid that likes to maybe jump around the page or they forget what line they're on or they get distracted by everything else and all the other letters and all the other words, these help them to really focus um, on and it helps minimize the distraction while they're focusing on these words and lines. It chunks them together and then something about using, especially the one on your finger, when you use it, it's a hands-on thing. And I don't know if you've noticed this, but with kids, hands-on really engages them and makes them want to take part. And so the fact that they get to control it is exciting to them. They're getting to highlight the words. And so it really helps them focus. These are great if your child has dyslexia or has been diagnosed with ADHD, but also just in general, if your child's learning to read. So I would suggest looking into those. If you haven't ever heard of them, guided reading strips, there's different kinds. Um, that you can look at on Amazon. And I think that can be an essential when you're learning to read. All right, another essential is this. Now, this one is just made out of PVC pipe, but it is a phonics phone. They have some that you could order online that actually look like telephones. And if you don't know what a phonics phone is, the child holds it up to their ear and then they speak. I'm gonna quiet down a little bit because it's so clear. They speak and they can hear the sound in their ear. And why this is important is when they're learning to first make their sounds of their letters and their blends, and they're starting to say those things, it's great for them to hear exactly and clearly what they're saying. So to make sure that they're pronouncing it right. And so these are great when they first start out, um, especially kindergartners, and they're learning really those sounds. I mean, preschoolers too. And then something about being able to read or do an activity holding a phone and talking on the phone. I mean, that's just another object that the kid gets to use to, you know, they feel like it's more like play than learning. And so it's a great win for them and they don't even realize how much it's helping them. So phonics phones, an essential, definitely in my book. All right, another essential that I believe is important is a timer. Now, it's not just any timer. For little kids, this type of timer is great as a visual because it's actually called a visual timer. Little kids, if you say, okay, I'm gonna set the timer for 15 minutes for you to do this, then how many times are you gonna be asked, how much time do I have left? How much time do I left? Is it almost over? But they can look at this timer and it shows how much time is left by the color that is on it. So the color slowly vanishes as the timer ticks away. And they have quiet ones where it's not ticking while your child's learning, but it slowly moves. And so your child can look at this 
and they can start learning how to gauge time because they notice that it's getting smaller and when all the color is gone, then that means their time is up. And so it's great for kids who don't necessarily have a good sense of time yet, but you want to set a timer for them, they can use this timer to kind of keep track of where they're at and how much time they have left. And I think it's great for preschool and kindergartners because using a visual timer for younger kids who don't really understand the complete concept of time yet is definitely an effective tool that I think you should try to use. All right, another essential that I believe is important is a dry erase board. Now, a lot of people have the large one hanging on their wall and that's great. I hope that one day I have an area where I can hang up a huge dry erase board. But right now, we, where we live, we have limited space for our schooling area. And so we're working on a small space. So for us, we just have the small whiteboards like this. And so these are great to use. Um, we use them with our good and beautiful math where they draw out math problems. The other side is lined. And so that's great to use um, when we're writing our letters or I will write letters on them and show him how the words are made. I'll write words on here too and then have him read the words to me. And so we use the markers and use different colors for silent letters, different colors for um, vowels and consonants. And there's just so many great things that you can do with a dry erase board. We use this a lot. And so whether you have a big one or a small one, I think these are really important for kindergarten, preschool, and to be honest, probably any age can benefit from having one of these. So I would definitely call that an essential. All right, another thing that I would recommend is books. Now this is something you probably already have at your house. So I think too many people underestimate the power of reading and reading out loud to your child. So even if your child's in the preschool or they're just starting to read and so they can't read certain books yet, reading out loud to your child is a huge win and they will learn so much. Uh, not only can they learn stuff from educational books, but just the love of wanting to read. The love of reading is something that they can pick up from you. And then I would encourage you to look into having a library card. Um, that way you don't have to store the books. You don't have to spend money on all the books. I mean, if you wanna have some in your own library, that's great. But the library has been a great resource for us. And then we have things like, we have these Bob books. I'm a fan of Bob books. Um, they are good for younger readers. And so my kindergartner likes to read these. They have certain ones like this one even here, First Stories um, is a great one to start out with. And so it's just simple, easy um, stories. A lot of them have the CVC words in them and just as they're first learning to read. So your child feels accomplished and excited because they can read a whole book on their own. So Bob, Bob books are a huge win in our house and they have all different kinds of sets. I even have more upstairs. Then we have the I Can Read books. These are my first reading books. Um, and my son loves the biscuit ones. It's the little puppy named Biscuit. And so there's Biscuit, a lot of them, Biscuit Stay at the Farm, Biscuit Meets the Class Pet, Biscuit and the Lost Teddy Bear. We're almost done reading all of Biscuit because he loves them so much. And so the other day I just found him sitting on the couch reading a book out loud to himself about Biscuit. And something about seeing your kindergartner sitting there and reading to himself made my mama heart so proud. So having books around that your kid loves to read and even that your kid can read on their own is definitely a big win. So I would have books and even readers for your younger kids. All right, another thing that's great for little kids, I mean, even as we get older, we still use these, but little kids like to have that hands-on still. And so it's flashcards, whether it's learning shapes, uh, maybe it's learning like this is opposites. We have um, good colors and shapes. My daughter likes that one sight words, sign language. We have flashcards with addition and subtraction where we do our addition song or our subtraction song in the morning so they can memorize those as well. And so flashcards is a great hands-on use. And a lot of times you can get some of these flashcards at Dollar Tree. So for just around a dollar, um, you're being able to have a resource that your children can use over and over again. And so I think flashcards are a great essential for a lot of ages, but especially preschool and kindergarten. So those are some of my top 
preschool and kindergarten essentials. And like I said, we'll have part two next week where I'll finish off the list. I've got some great stuff to show you in that video as well. And I hope that whether you're a brand new homeschooler or maybe you've been homeschooling for years and you're already a pro at this, that maybe you were able to see something in this list that will help you and inspire you of an idea that you can use for your child. And if there's something that I didn't mention, an essential that you can think of, would you put it down in the comments below? I would really appreciate that because I wanna find out more tools that I can use to help my kids grow and to learn in the best way that they can. And if this video was at all helpful to you, would you hit that like button and maybe subscribe to my channel? I would really appreciate it. And join us again next time when we go over the rest of our list for our preschool and kindergarten essentials. See you soon. Bye.